Let's load up the Digitone. Let's see here, Digitact. Wait, why, why isn't Digitone showing up? This is really weird. This is super weird. Did I, did I miss something? Hello there and welcome to Bow Beats. Today we are checking out Overbridge. It's currently in open beta. It's been in development for quite some time and rightfully so, some people have been a little bit annoyed with the fact that it wasn't out when it was promised. But I think, and I'm just guessing here, that developing software that works across different DAWs, that works across different operating systems for these kind of pretty complicated devices, yeah, has its problems. And for today's video, I want to take you through the process of how I set it up. I'm actually using the Analog Heat Mark II and the Digitac together with my iMac and Cubase. So I want to take you through that process. But I also want to add the Digitone and see if I can add a third device and make it run stably. And I also want to address the question, was it worth the wait? So for you who don't know what Overbridge even is and why it's a kind of a big deal, well, it's the software and the drivers needed to use your electron devices with your computer. It lets you stream the audio tracks from these devices and use them inside of your DAW, your music production software. So for example, you can take your Digitac and you can stream all of the eight channels as individual channels. And it also means that you can use the inputs on some of the devices as an audio interface. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Overbridge also sort of works like a VST, so you will have control over your device inside of the DAW in the form of a, of a graphical UI. So if you want to set this up yourself, what you need to do first is update the firmware to the beta firmware, or if you're watching this in the future, there is probably some official release being out there. So just make sure you have the latest firmware for your devices. To transfer the firmware, you hook up your devices over USB to a computer. You use a software like Transfer or C6 in order to transfer uh, the firmware update to the unit. Make sure that the unit's USB is set up right so it actually sends MIDI over USB and you should be pretty much good to go from there. In C6 or Transfer, you make sure that you have selected the correct Electron device as input and output and then you just send the firmware update to the unit. On your device, you go to the setup menu, then you go to system and then to OS upgrade, and then you send the firmware. Now, if everything's working correctly, you should be able to click the little overbridge icon and then see your device pop up in the overbridge engine. Now, if your device is not showing, what you have to do is you have to go into the system's settings again, USB config, and make sure that overbridge mode is enabled. Once it's enabled, the device should pop up. One really cool thing that you get with Overbridge now is not only the VST plugins, but also the standalone editors. And you don't only use them to edit what's going on on the devices, but you can also use them as multi-track recorders. So they'll record onto your hard drive, which is excellent for multi-tracking. So here you can see me recording eight channels, the eight individual channels from the Digitact plus the left and right main channels which I use for, um, use for effects sense. And let me show you how I set this up on the Digitact itself. To set this up, you go to the audio routings menu on your Digitact. There you can set which tracks are being sent to the effects. So I have my eight tracks being sent to the delay and the reverb. And then you can pick which tracks are being sent to the master output. This way you can have it set up so that the individual eight tracks are not being sent to the master output, but the reverb and delay is. This way you can record eight individual tracks to your computer and the delay and reverb as a stereo track. But there is no way to get the delay onto, say, just a, a single track, because these are send effects and not insert effects. 
Now, like I said earlier, it's quite possible to use an Electron device as the audio interface. You simply have to monitor through the headphones output or the left and right outputs to say a pair of monitors. But I prefer to use my own audio interface, the Audio Fuse, but this requires a bit of a workaround inside of Cubase. Now to record your dig attack, if you're not using it as the audio interface, you basically have to create fake buses. You go into the VST connections menu, you create as many buses as you want, output buses, and then you go to the tracks in the mixer, the input channels from the DigiTact, and you choose the fake buses at, as outputs. This means that the DigiTact's audio will be routed to the fake buses. Now, in order to record this, you have to add a number of audio channels, audio tracks inside of Cubase, and then select the fake bus as the input for the track. This way, you'll be sending the audio from the DigiTact to the fake bus, which in turn is routed to an audio track where you can hit the record and record the audio. This is the most easy way to have the DigiTact running alongside your other software and hardware if you're using another audio interface as your sort of main output. In my setup, I'm using the analog heat and it's quite interesting. It, it shows up just like any VST plugin. You select it, you add it, to a track and then voila, there's audio. <laughs> Whatever you're playing on that track will be processed in real time through the analog heat. Of course, you can't do any fancy bouncing or render in place. You have to do real time recording, but it actually works and it works really well as a plugin. And when it comes to controlling the sound, you can do it either from the hardware unit itself, just like normal, or you can do it from inside the software. So speaking about analog heat, it has actually been the most fun of all the devices to use with Overbridge. Of course, I have very practical use cases for using Overbridge with the DigiTac, doing multi-track recordings, for example, being able to mix stuff. but. For me, uh, the Analog Heat Mark II makes a lot of sense as a VST plugin because it, it really works just like any plugin. You just slap it onto a track uh, and then you're ready to go. You see the audio popping up and you basically have a hardware controller that you can use to, to shape the sound. But it's analog and it sounds really good. And you can have it like on a, on a drum bus, for example, or you could slap it onto the master output, for example. Now there's one thing you should consider, and that is that you need to do like real time recording in order to actually capture the sound. I haven't found any way to do the sort of render in place. Um, I, I suppose there isn't. If you know of any such strategies, let me know in the comments. I haven't been able to figure that one out. So basically what it means is that if you have, say, uh, yeah, you have a drum bus, you have a lot of drums going into the bus, and then you slap the analog heat VST on top of it. Then you actually need to do a real time recording of that in order to capture the sound. But if you want to save that for later and just do it when you do the, the final rendering, that's not a problem either because you can just do real time rendering of the entire song and it'll capture the audio with uh, yeah, with the actual analog heat sound in it. So yeah, that's one way to do it. But I, yeah, I really enjoy it actually. So next up, let's add the Digitone to this setup and see if we can just make it work. So let's grab it. Bum, 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 bum. And the firmware is slowly updating, so far so good. And then we're going to the settings menu, system, USB config and overbridge mode. And let's see if it pops up. Do, 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 do. So now we're on blank patterns and I want to go into Cubase and see if I can just, you know, make it work. And as you can see, when I fire it up, we have the audio fuse, the dig attack, dig dig tone and so on. I'm running with the audio fuse for this. And I'm loading my test project here, as you can see. We have, yeah, the dig attack tracks over here. Let's load up the dig tone. See here, dig attack. I know for an okay, so it's battery going to do you get attacked. Wait, why why isn't Digitone showing up? This is really weird. This is super weird. Did I did I miss something? 
Diggy tone. Dig attack. What? Isn't it, isn't it done yet? Oh well, let's see. Let's go go back here. Didn't I read the fine prints or something? Uh, electron. Oh man, <laughs> this was annoying. Okay. Uh. Okay, so I done goofed here. Uh, apparently, the, there is no Digitone VST at the moment. It doesn't seem to be ready. I suppose there will be one, I don't know. Okay, so new challenge here. Let's see if we can get audio from the Digitone into Cubase some other way, even if we don't have the VST enabled. So let's see if we can make it work. Because we don't have the VST yet, we can't just magically make the Digitone appear inside of Cubase. But what we can do is we can create a new project. And in this new project, we'll try and use the Digitone as the audio interface instead. So here I'm just going into the device setup, I'm going into VST Audio System and I'm switching from the Audio Fuse to the Digitone. So with 256 samples we're seeing about 12 milliseconds of latency but you should be able to push that down. So now I need to grab headphones because the audio will be coming out of the Digitone instead. But let's load a project and see if we can just get the audio to, to go into Cubase. Let's see here. Okay we have a lot of patterns here so let's see. Oh, we can see that we have audio going into Cubase here as well. And yeah, I'm just checking here that the Digitone standalone editor and plugin are currently in development and will be released l l at a later date, so yeah. But we're definitely getting audio from the Digitone into Cubase, so let me just add some audio tracks here. So we have five stereo channels, I guess it's the four channels and the master stereo and I suppose when they're ready you will probably be able to just send the effects to the stereo output just like with the Digitact and then you have four clean uh, channels. So you have the effects channel on stereo and four channels, but maybe more. I mean I can see more if I go into devices here. I can see uh, there's like 12 inputs but I'm not sure if you know that's happening or if that's just a bug but let's uh, let's record Double check so that audio plays back. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Let's save this. Dig a tone test. And now, just for the fun of it, let's try and slap the analog heat here on top of the stereo output. Yep, works. Yes, yes, it works. So now I'm just gonna export this with the analog heat on top of it, do a real-time render and see if it works. Let's see, export audio mix town, real-time export. And while it renders we will go and get a coffee. sip of the coffee together. So definitely looking forward to the release of the software for the Digitone but 
Recording seems to work really nicely inside of Cubase regardless, so that's a, that's a plus. So was it worth the wait? Has Electron delivered on what they promised? Well, I can only speak for myself. I, I wasn't dying to get over bridge, like it wasn't a huge part of my setup and I didn't have a huge need for it. So of course, uh, to me, it wasn't that big of a deal that I had to wait for it. For me, it was more important that it was stable when it actually came out. And looking at the beta and the current state of it, it looks to be a solid software. You know, it looks to me, to me at least, that they've ironed out the kinks, it seems to work. So yeah, I, I think it's been worth the wait for me at least. Of course your mileage might vary, uh, I want to say that very clearly in the video, that this works for my setup because it, you know, there's multiple factors here, so the devices, the USB hubs, the computer, I guess the bus inside of the USB bus inside of the computer as well, uh, what operating system, what DAW. So there are multiple factors that can make it work better or worse depending on what you're working with. But for me at least with my setup as you've seen today, it seems to work pretty well. Oh, and if you have particular problems, I'm probably not your, your best source of information. You should probably head over to Electronauts, the um, Electron Forum, and ask over there, because I'm only familiar with Cubase and sort of my setup, so take it for what it's worth. Now for me personally, in the way I use my devices, there are two things that made it worth the wait. Firstly, how stably and how well the Electron Analog Heat runs as a plugin. It's been smooth sailing, it's probably been the device that has sounded the best and run most stably over Overbridge, for me at least. Uh, just using it as a plugin, just inserting it on a track is something that I can see myself doing a lot more in the future, using this as the master effects processor, slapping it on the stereo bus for example on a track, just adding a little bit of that, that analog warmth. To the sound or maybe using it when I create samples inside of a DAW for example, I don't know. But I can definitely see myself uh, putting this on the main software desk I have over here and just letting it be there, using it whenever I need to. So yeah, you'll probably see less of the heat in my hardware setups and more in my software setups. That's that's my thought at least. Now secondly, I think that the standalone softwares are really nice. I think that's a lot of where the strength really lies because I will not be using uh, the VSTs that much. I won't be like programming inside of a DAW, I won't really use it in tandem with other software. Uh, except for maybe the analog heat like I was talking about. So for example, my DigiTag that will mostly be using standalone, uh, recording it, multi-tracking it in order to mix down my songs. And I've already recorded one song that I had on the DigiTag that I've been waiting to, to multi-track record and it worked really nicely, it sounds really good and I now can, um, yeah, I can mix it much easier because I can do like a live jam, multi-track recorded over USB and work with it. Those are like the two things that made it super worth for me at least. Uh, let me know in the comment section what you think about the software. Are you having issues? Does it work for you? Uh, has it been you know worth the wait? Let us know in the comment section. And as always, if you want to support future videos here on the channel, head over to patreon.com slash bowbeats. Thank you so much for being here and yeah, hope to see you in a future video.